um, Beth and I had discussed this this morning, and we just thought that way for some of you that have multiple properties, and that way you can register and choose properties that you you don't that way you, not every property if you choose you don't want to use use this or you want to just use it for one of your properties because a lot of you have properties that are very close to each other um, we just thought this would be the best option so um, definitely give us your feedback and let us know how this works for uh, future reference so Travis I'm gonna let you go ahead and take it from here okay thanks Ashley and I am recording this session and I will email you the recording upon completion. Oh, great. So if you wanted to forward it to anyone else, you can do that. Okay, great. So thanks for joining us, everyone. My name is Travis Pullen with Wage Watch. And currently on your screen, you should see our homepage, wagewatch.com. And I'm just going to verify with Ashley that that is correct. Yes. Okay. So if you already have an account, an existing account, you would sign in by clicking the login on the top right corner and entering your username and password. For those of you who don't have an account, you would click on our, off our homepage under our surveys, the link for hospitality. And then you're gonna click subscribe next to the 2016 Pure Mark Compensation Survey. And that'll give you a five-step enrollment process to sign up. Uh, and then when you get to step five, there's a payment option where you can choose to pay via credit card or uh, to have an invoice emailed to you. The cost for Full service hotels is $400, and the cost for select service properties is $150. And that is for survey year 2016, so that'll give you the ability to run reports and update information through the end of this year. So once you've subscribed and you sign into your account, then it's going to take you to your homepage. And that is where your property or properties would be listed. So uh, as Ashley was saying, some of you oversee multiple hotels. So if you wanted to have them under the same account, you could do that. But for most of you, you probably just have one property listed. And once you sign into your account, if you look at the navigation bar, if you click account details, oops, just one second. Okay, here we go. So on the navigation bar from left to right, if you click account details, that's where you can change your password, update your personal information, and you can actually add in subusers as well by clicking create new subuser, and then you can assign them their own username and password, and then they can access the account as well. If you wanted to order additional locations, you can also do it through account detail by clicking order additional location. We also have a positions tab, which gives you a downloadable 
spreadsheet of our, all of our job titles and descriptions. Uh, you can sort this by any of the headers. So if I click department, it'll resort it by um, department starting with administration. And then to download it, you just click the spreadsheet. We also have a glossary that gives you the list of all the metrics that are built into the report and their definition, and it's also exportable. If you need to contact us, that's self-explanatory. You can do it by phone, mail, feedback, or email. And probably the most important thing on the navigation bar are tutorials. So we have four videos on how to both input or update your information and also how to run reports. So upon setting up your account, the first thing you are going to want to do is in input your data. Uh, our survey works on a one-for-one, -one, meaning that if you wanted to run information on housekeeper, it would require you to first input your own data for that job title. And you're going to start out with general information by clicking enter data. Everything with a red asterisk is required. So guest rooms, star diamond rating, number of employees, operating revenue, and then once you have input your data, you would click Save and Continue, and that'll take us to step two. So here, collect bargaining agreements, yes or no, drug testing, both, both uh, post-accident and pre-employment, Budgeted pay increase for this year for both exempt and non-exempt job titles. And then we get to pay practice information. Nothing is actually required on this page. So I'll click Save and Continue. And then we get into uh, multilingual premiums. So then once you have uploaded your general information, then you can begin inputting your compensation data. You can either do it online, and if you do it online, it's instantaneous. So if I go in and click, for example, entry accountant and click submit, I can put in the pay type how many employees I have at that position, their average base pay, the start rate. If there is a probationary adjustment, the amount of that usually uh, is zero. Before the Great Recession, you would see 50 cents or a dollar after the probationary period was over, but that's very rare now. If you have a question about any of these metrics, if you hover your cursor on the question mark, it'll give you an explanation. And once again, here only those with a red asterisk are required. Their exempt status, how they receive a raise and whether or not they're a union employee. And then once we enter that data, we would click Save, and it's going to give you a verification that it has been saved successfully. And then we could, it's going to give us a date stamp too, so it shows that we input this data 412. so that we could go on to the next position. So that's handy if you need information right away for a job title, but 90% of the time you're gonna use the Excel option. 
So we'll click Excel and then download Excel worksheet. And this is just a better method if you're inputting data for several job titles at once because you can save this Excel spreadsheet to your desktop or to your computer. And then if you need to leave, you can always come back to it. So you would complete the job titles that you have at your property. And then upon completion, email this entire spreadsheet to upload at wagewatch.com. And then once we receive it, we upload it into our database within 72 hours of receiving it. So any questions about the data upload process? Okay, then moving along, uh, once you have input your data and we receive payment, we activate your account and then you can begin running reports. So to do so, we would click the create report button next to the property that you wanna run the report for. Travis, is that immediately? Yeah. So once the account is created and they submit their payment, then they can immediately log in and start? Correct. So, okay. uh, for example, if someone signed up today and they paid via credit card when they signed up and they input their data online today, they could run reports today. Okay. So, and then if they choose to invoice, obviously, you, we would have to wait until you received payment via check or however it is. Correct. So if it's invoice, okay. then we create an invoice and email it out. And then there's okay. also a payment link. So if they choose to pay via credit card uh, in the body of the email, they could do that or they could pay via check. Their choice. Okay. Okay. So then to run a report, typically you're going to click current data, always current data. So that's the last 12 months rolling. And compensation, we have a standard report and an advanced report. The standard report is preferable for running many job titles at once, whereas the advanced is better if you really want to zero in on one job title and see specifically those hotels that have input their data for that job title and then uh, select your optimum competitive set. So first I'm going to run a standard report and we can match the data in terms of how we entered it or we can view it all annually, hourly, or monthly. So most of the time we'll click match my data. Uh, we have a target percentile. And we also have a weighted average. The weighted average is the default, but for example, if you wanted to see what the, I don't know, the 60th percentile is, you could click that and put it in and it'll build it into the report. And we also have a data agent calculator. So this is really for forecasting. If you wanted to see what the rates would look like uh, next April, and calculate it up by 3%, we could do that. So then it'll take the average rates as of today and then calculate everything up by 3% to April of 2017. And we'll click next. And that's gonna give us a map and corresponding list for your city market. So right now we're working at a test hotel in Boston. And the map matches the list below, although we can sort the list by any of the headers. So for example, I could click zip code and it'll reorder the list by, by their zip code. Now, when we look at the stick pins, yellow are vacation ownership, red 
are full service hotels. Blue are select service properties. And you'll note that when you scroll your cursor over the stick pen, it will give you the name and corresponding address of the hotel. So how we would select our comp set, I can scroll in and then we can either click them off the map. And when we do that, you'll notice that it populates the corresponding list below, or we could click them off of the, the list too. So then once we select our comp set, we'll click next. And that'll give us a list of job titles. And we need a threshold of at least five properties to run a report. So of the comp set that we selected, we have one match where we have at least five or more, which is for housekeeper, which we would expect because all hotels, I would say, employ housekeepers. However, like some of these other unique, more unique positions, we would need to go back and select more properties in order to get a threshold of five so that we're in compliance with Department of Justice guidelines. So I'm going to click um, Housekeeper and Create Report. And how we read the report is your information is in the blue column under Response. You're comparing yourself head to head to the aggregate of the 10 properties that reported data for Housekeeper. So in Boston, we can see that the average of these 10 is almost $18 and we're at $15. So that puts us $2.93 below market. And then we have the same layout for the starting rate, probationary adjustment, and then we get into bonus and other incentive compensation data. The pay range maximum, lowest and highest paid incumbents, uh, what the percent are of exempt versus non-exempt. So in this case, all 10 properties said that they're non-exempt employees and how they receive a pay increase. Four hotels said it's some type of a combination. Three indicated flat across the board, three merit. And nine of the 10 properties said that they are non-union. We can take this report and download it in a report format to Acrobat, CSV, Excel, Rich Text, TIFF, or Web format. Or what most people do is they click Excel flat file, and then it's going to get out of this. Okay, here we go. So then if you click flat file, it's going to give you uh, a list of all of your job titles running down. And then if we go across and we can see number of reporting properties, number of employees, and then we start with the average base pay and then the starting rate. So any questions at this point about the report? No, I don't, I don't have any questions.
Okay. So that's that's pretty straightforward in terms of uploading data and running reports. Does anyone have any questions about anything else? How would I this is Kim. How would I know um what other properties in Montgomery County where I am participate? Uh -huh. I mean I'd need to make sure that there's enough data out there to make the four hundred dollars worth it. So how would Great I know question. that before I buy it? So if we go to if you go to wagewatch.com to our homepage, we have a participant map. So where is Montgomery County? Is that in uh, DC Maryland. in that market? Maryland, okay. Maryland. So you click select state and we'll go to Maryland. There are two ways to do this actually. I'll show you both ways. So I'll click Maryland and then that will give us a list, well, the map of all the participants. Okay. Okay. So where 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 are you? We're in Gaithersburg or Germantown. I see Germantown there. Oh, okay, so I'm going to just scroll in, and then if you scroll in far enough, then you get the okay. Okay. locations of all the participants. So that's one way okay. to do it. So that's the map. We also have a participant okay. list. If you go to hospitality and click participants, mm -hmm. It'll give you the entire participant list sorted by state, city, and hotel name. So and these would be all Maryland. current, current yep, participants. Yes, these are all. That's correct. Okay. So we we can drop down to Maryland, and then okay. it's sorted by city and the property. Mm -hmm. And we have the management company too. Okay. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Any other questions? If you need to get a hold of us, if you come to our homepage and click contact, then we have all of our information right here. And Ashley, that's all I have, unless there are other questions. Okay, nobody has any other questions? No. Okay. I try to make it as short and painless as possible. <laughs> you did a good job. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So I guess there was one question though that I have. Um, I know Kim and I were talking about this when I was at Gaithersburg on Friday and I'm not I just want to clarify. So, for example, Kim um, is, in, is the HR director for three properties in her area, and mm -hmm. so um, they're all fairly close to each other. Would she? Is there a way for her to? I guess she would initially have to register every hotel in order to get the reports. I guess they're just because they're so close. I wasn't sure if if when she goes to compare, if she's going to be able to just see all the data around her, if she's going to necessarily need to. Perhaps not. I, I would probably. Yeah. And I know start the same one. Right. I, I, my there's the same with a few other of the yeah. HR directors that we have and that have multiple properties. So. Yeah, because I have one full service and then I have two select service. So if I pick full service, am I going to see everything 
or I'm only going to see information for, for full service hotels. You get it all. I don't want to pay 550. Uh, right. So my recommendation both. would first be to sign up your full service hotel. Mm -hmm. And the primary difference between the account of a full service ho hotel and a limited service hotel is you have access to more job titles because uh, with the select service properties, they don't have access to F and B just simply because they really don't need it. So it's, Right. It's makes it makes it more overwhelming. Uh, mm -hmm. So to simplify it for the select service properties, we just trim it down to like 20 or so pertinent job titles that they're likely to employ, and we don't include the full service titles. So for any situation like you're referring to, if you have multiple hotels, my suggestion would be to first sign up one, and then if you needed to add additional properties later, you could always do that. But if I do the full service, am I going to see just full service data? No, you, you get, uh, so for the map, um, I'll show you, it, it, uh, it works the same for all in terms of mm -hmm. who you can access. So if I go to Maryland again, This map is identical to the map that you get to run reports, so you have access to all of the participants in your area, okay. whether or not they're full service, limited service, gaming, or okay. uh, vacation ownership. Okay, so I just have to pick the ones I want the data from, regardless Correct. of full service or select service. Okay. Because you you may want to select a blend of properties that are close to you based on mm -hmm. what type of job title you're looking at. Right. Um, so that would have something to do with it. But, right. yep, you have access to everything, and you can choose who you want to include in your comp set. Okay. Perfect. It doesn't look like there's much in Virginia. Well, there there is, but we are. I'm looking. I I chose Maryland for the state. Oh. So if if I clicked on Virginia, hmm. then it would add in all the okay inventory in Virginia. Okay. And, I, and you're in, in uh, Gaithersburg, correct? Yeah. So that's actually, we consider that part of the Washington, D.C. market. Mm -hmm. And it gives you access to properties in both Maryland and Virginia and okay. the district. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions? I don't. Everybody good? No other questions? Thank you for putting this together, Ashley. Oh, you're welcome. I'm sorry for the confusion at the beginning. I'm not sure why it wasn't working. So I thank you guys for your patience getting started, but um, I'm glad it, that we were able to do this. And um, if anybody has any questions, please reach out to myself and I can reach out to Travis or we can reach out to Travis directly. Um, whatever works best for you guys. I'm always here if you have any questions, need any help. And um, so like I said at the beginning of the call, if there was anybody that came on after the call had started, we had made a decision this morning to go ahead and have you guys just register your properties on your own rather than paying um, as one 
large package just because if you look and you think that maybe you want to wait a little bit or you don't need it at this time, that way you have the option to participate or not. So um, if, if you decide you want to move forward, you're more than welcome from this point out to go ahead and register and get started. And again, if you guys have any questions or need any help, please reach out to me. I'm always here. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Travis, thank you for your time and all your information. I know that we all really appreciate it. Sure, my pleasure, and I will send you the recording. Great. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Great. Have Bye. a great day. Bye. Bye-bye.